Uh, good morning, ma'am. Ah, uh, very good morning, sir. Can we start the session, sir? Ah, uh, sure, ma'am. I'm okay. I'm ready. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, Jagdishwari, ma'am. Please start the session, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, please, ma'am. A warm good morning to everyone. A warm good morning to everyone. A hearty welcome to our honourable trustee, Sri Madhu Saraswati Kanayan, ma'am. Dr. Priya, ma'am. Principal Dr. Ponnasamy Sir, Convener Dr. Anuradha Ma'am, and a special chief guest Dr. Kandapan Bala Subramanian Sir for his address on expanding the learning horizon in higher education. Once again, I welcome you all for today's session of our international FDP. Thank you, ma'am. Please welcome, sir. Uh, you can start the session, sir. Uh, okay, madam. Thank you so much. Let me. Okay. Hope everyone can see me. Yeah, yeah visible, sir. Yes, sir. Visible, sir. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Very good morning to all. Good afternoon, probably for someone who's not from yes. India, and good evening. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Anuradha, Madam, for inviting me to share this session and providing a virtual platform through the Google Meet, through this webinar. So just to share what I have learned, uh, or probably what I'm still learning. OK. So I also would like to welcome all the participants. I think without you, definitely there is nothing happening. So participants is always very important in any any kind of business or any kind of events, what we call it as. Uh, so before I proceed, uh, I just would like to quickly give you, maybe quickly tell some housekeeping rules, uh, virtual housekeeping. Make sure your uh, mic is mute unless the organizer or uh, from my side, I ask you to give some feedback. Then you can unmute your, me, your mic and uh, so that it can reduce our background noise. Uh, and another important thing, like uh, try to keep your video off if you want to have a better bandwidth. And if you're keeping your video on, uh, make sure your background is nice. OK, it's a bit uh, good appealing. OK, so because as an educator, we must also uh, educate ourselves. The reason why I'm saying uh, recent days, I was been attending a lot of webinars and also giving a lot of webinars. So some places I notice, like I must indicate this. And another thing, during my presentation, once I open the PowerPoint, make sure you go to the participants and look for my name. And you have to pin. Then only you can see my slides. That's another issue. Uh, some of them will face if you are not really uh, not pinning me, especially in Google. Okay, without further ado, uh, let me share the screen. Give me a moment. Uh, one second, I thank everyone for being here. So I'll try to make sure uh, I try my level best to address the topic of today. Uh, so before I proceed, I just would like to know whether everybody can see my screen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, organizer, please say if uh, participants, is there any message coming? They cannot see screen. The voice is low. Please acknowledge. Please stop me so that I can yes, sir. stop there. And... I'll take care, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Without thank further ado, let me start the session. I think the time given for me is. Let me put the timer, maybe around 40 minutes to share. Then we will have more Q&A session. Uh, the concept, what I'm going to try, it's not may not be new, but probably you have been practicing, but probably you are not aware of it, which we call it as borderless classroom. So borderless classroom is nothing but a classroom where you are expanding your learning out of the normal four wall covered classroom. That's what we call it as. I put it as expanding the learning zone in a higher education, or even it applicable to other uh, primary, secondary, K-12 educations too. 
So when I say a borderless classroom, is basically I say the learning should not have a border. So when the learning don't have a border, our classroom should be beyond the borders. So that means don't always focus that learning should happen only within your premises. Okay, only the learning should happen only from one teacher to the students. Uh, yes, we have been doing a lot of uh, industry trips. Probably you are taking students for industry visit. Yeah, it is also considered as borderless classroom, but I'm going to put in a different way. So thanks for the platform. So with, yeah, before I move on, just a quick uh, recap, uh, intro about me. I'm Kandapan Balasubramanian. I'm an associate professor from School of Hospitality, Tourism and Events from Taylor's University, Malaysia. And one more thing, I'm very closely connected to Coimbatore because it's my hometown. Okay, so I born, grow up in Coimbatore. I started my career also Coimbatore. I started my career with Kalpagum College in 2002 in academic. Uh, before that, my industry career started in uh, late 90s with Sheraton Hotel in Chennai. Uh, so the travel started. Uh, so I also try to share because same like this webinar, so whatever innovation we are doing, we try to share in a showcase, what we call in International University for Carnival for e-learning, so which I'm participating since 2015. But luckily, like last year, I got the gold award for my innovation on augmented reality in the classroom. And also I got the exemplary meritorious award uh, uh, because I teach food and beverage operations, service quality, wine studies, and business simulation. So I transformed the normal training restaurant to become a digital restaurant. So this is where I won an award. And also that's what took me to participate and get selected in Apple Distinguished Educator. So this is a title which you get based on your transformation. Every two years, they will open the application from Apple Education US. So once you submit, so based on your innovation, they will. that's a process, it's an application process. So if you are selected, you will be joining the community. So every two years once, they will do five days of workshop. Uh, they will rotate, like Asia Pacific, they will rotate from Singapore. They will go to, uh, last time I went to Australia. In India, yes, in India also they have, like they've divided the entire zone. The reason why I'm sharing, at least sharing is very important. Probably you are doing a lot of things, but this is the right channel to put yourself. And I give a lot of importance to service innovation in terms of hospitality tourism, and also in hospitality education and higher education. That's why I came with the concepts of uh, borderless classroom since last two to three years. I'm using it and contactless classroom, which emerged due to the COVID. That's a small summary about me. So I would like to start my session with some quotes. Yes, uh, the teachers should be the best mind in the country. Yes, educators. OK, as uh, we celebrate our Teachers Day in India, because in Malaysia, they celebrate different day last week. It was over last Saturday. Uh, in my, we celebrate on 5th September with, uh, because of uh, really honoring uh, Dr. Radhakrishnan. So he said the students, like students are the few, like Dr. Abdul Kalam say, student is the future of the nation, the future of the nation. But who molds the students is the teacher. So the teacher should be the best mind in the country if you really see your country to be progressing. And then Aristotle, he said, educating the mind without educating the art no education at all so why i put this quote here if you are an educator if you are going to the classroom just to deliver the content okay just you want to fulfill the need of that particular class outcome you are not really doing a good education your education should come from the heart try to bring a lot of trends try to provide a space for the students to share create new learning experience then the education becomes totally different that's what it comes from your heart. So why we all keep on talking about a lot of like innovation in, in teaching and learning? That's one reason is because of industry revolution 4.0. Yes, even our uh, education, we had a revolution starting from those days when you see the even the fire has been invented by the demonstration. Because those days there is no written skills. There is no people don't know how to read. That's a revolution in the like. Education revolution 1.0, right? So from there, we moved to the uh, learning different languages. Then from there, we started writing scripts. Like means we started giving the soul to our lang language through words. From there, 
we all move to the current education 4.0 after that a uh, lot of printing development 3.0 then 4.0 is more on social development so what it all created is basically because of the industry revolution 4.0 from 1.0 from the steam engine to 4.0 what we call information era okay and we are moving forward to 5.0 is more on augmented era human augmentation so a lot of transformation is happening in the workforce so you cannot teach the student the way you teach before because skills are changing the old space they need a different skills so when they need different skills you must transform the skills because today's old space are changing especially after covid there will be a big shift in the learning space and one more thing we are teaching to the students millennial learners for example they are in post graduation but probably now the university students are in gen z generation which we call it as they have been born with technology these people right they have been surrounded with technology so from the beginning until now even when they are infant they have been given they know how to play an ipad but when you ask them to use a calculator or probably when you ask them to use a normal uh, traditional calculation probably they will struggle but the industry requires that because they are going to work with the machines they are going to work with the computer even the accounts for example they are not going to use the manual method using the books everything is there smart book so because of lot of shift in the industry okay lot of shift in the the people learners expectations have changed but we need to understand the learning never changed till the learning is there but only thing it is starting transformation in learning okay so that's because of all these changes uh this is a, a quick glimpse of how the education and industry has been evolution has happened in terms of formats when i say format structures in terms of philosophy in terms of user experience in terms of uh, providers okay when you take for example 1998 to 2000 this is where a lot of e learning started coming up okay in us uk and also asian part even those days like 90s we call uh, distance education in 80s right so normally you have to register in distance education they will send the material to home like any university bardia or it can be uh, madurai kamaraj or even igno university what they have done distance education so from there it moved to a blended approach right so then from there we move to the uh, what we call like the learning changes with the lms systems learning management system so the institution started investing on a proper learning management systems because they want to create a seamless experience to the user end user end is basically our students right so this is where like blackboard started coming in moodle started coming in then also google now in 2010 hello yes yeah so the learning management system from just initially started as a competitive edge then 2010 onwards it started becoming as a creating an experience for the students so how the learning management can create a, a unique experience what we call customer experience what we call user experience nowadays ux right so this has become a focus of many institution uh, this is what the philosophy started changing from 70 2010 that's a model designed for the industry in 80s like the learning style that means most of the time the employee will learn 70 percentage after they get a job 20 percentage they learn from the industry like through the education and 10 probably from experience but the same concept we are going to apply in our education nowadays that's nothing but we call it as education 5.0 how this 70 20 10 model can be applied that means how the 70 percentage of learning can be informal not very structured not in a linear manner it can be a, a non linear approach and 20 percentage may be a formal and 10 percentage probably you can have a structures so a lot of changes going to come then we live in a digital world yeah a lot of changes and when we come to 2020 before covid i'm talking the learning was everywhere the people started looking a lot of learning social space and but pandemic right so because of pandemic a lot of changes so without uh, much more introduction of the learning so now i go to the main core of my borderless classroom okay so today my presentation is most on a sharing experience 
okay so that's why most of my slides you will see the pictures of my own experience and i'm going to explain from that rather than taking points form okay so the borderless classroom it is how you are going to create a collaboration and how you are going to be creative and how you are very innovative that's very important so taking an example of our cobol's experiential learning cycle because he says that there are four types of learners in a classroom so that's why i want to choose why blc borderless learning classroom can be a good concept to align to the cobol's experiential learning cycle because when you create different learning experience automatically the students can learn even like we call work visual audio kinesthetic right and also this kind of people uh, the learning can be done so same like that approach the what he says cobol theory says each and every students learn in a different way one may be reflective observation that means you give a task uh, probably a playing a video ask the students to observe the video and reflect on the video then it may be good some may be abstract conceptualization gathering knowledge or skill from the experience you say okay this is a scenario here can you share the solution from your own experience for example i can say okay when in a tourist destination uh, or maybe like let's take a restaurant example so when you go to a restaurant why this restaurant is very congested okay from your own experience or maybe i say user experience how you want this restaurant to be redesigned then they will start applying the knowledge right then active experimentation this is what we i think most of our management schools we do like poster presentation or models right conceptual models designing so all this thing can be done all this thing can be done on all this thing can be done when you have and uh, new skill abilities then concentrate experience engaging in activity and experience this some of the people when you involve them through an activity gamification or simulation or maybe any response system they will be very active so what is borderless classroom basically why we need to focus on that it is nothing but clearly designed for the 21 century learner space because in the 21 century learner space we give lot of value to see more than a values okay so c is basically communication collaboration critical thinking creativity cultural adaptation right all these things has been focused rather than attitude and actions okay abilities and others so why we do that okay why borderless classroom because it can help you to do a scaffolding so when i say scaffolding for learning where you create a space with a stage by stage it's a simple way i can say it's a game of games so only when you finish level 1 you go to level 2 so you are creating a scaffold effect uh so how we can do that so i break down my borderless classroom according to me i am defining okay there may be many definitions according to me it can be done in three pillars one involving your industry either in campus or offshore number 2 it can be academicians virtually or social space number 3 peers when i say peers you are colleagues either locally or within university or within the district or it can be global so that's what i am going to explain so i put how to implement that because i told what is borderless how to implement that so when we say an industry integration okay what i come with two years back is a concept called i square integrations industry integrated teaching and learning so you can bring the industry people okay or probably you ask the industry people what is that problem take that problem as a case study or maybe a pbo approach product based or maybe outcome based approach or pbl approach product based or maybe it can be project based learning approach take that problem it can be project or problem based learning take the real example design your project assessment to the students ask the students to come up with the presentation and probably you invite so there are two ways can be done either you invite the industry to your space to see the presentation or you move your students to the industry and i'm going to give i'm going to show some of the example 
and the mystery shopper experience, like giving an audit experience to the students and running events in your campus. Okay, that's all can be done with collaborating with the industry. That means I'm talking here running events, not only with your students. Involving your students in the industry, like for example, catering, hotel management, they always involve through the outdoor catering. Or maybe business people can involve in a management campaign with some companies. Then it becomes more fruitful. So what can be done in the academicians? Okay, it's basically connecting your expertise to your classroom. For example, it can happen, you physically can invite your colleague to come and share their experience. So we must bring that collaboration in the classroom because we have been talking about collaboration to the students. So as an educator, how you are collaborating, that's very important. Then overseas trips. Okay, that means you are taking, I think many universities in India, especially in many part of, uh, especially North or South or East, doesn't matter. India is always one, right? So from India, a lot of things are happening. People are traveling, students are traveling because of mobility experience, industry tools, and CBL approach. Okay, so when I say CBL approach, it's nothing but uh, uh, case-based, okay, case-based learning approach. Uh, so this can be done, uh, connecting. Then as I told, peer-to-peer, -to -peer, global classroom virtual trips, which I'm going to show some of the examples. So this is one of my example from a global borderless classroom connecting Asia to, oh, sorry, connecting Asia to America. I think that is, sorry, connecting uh, Asia to Asia, Malaysia to in India. So this is one of my class, which I'm teaching wine lab. Okay, my students are in a wine lab in my, Taylor's University, okay, and there is another side is the students from uh, Christ University from Bangalore, okay. So you can see that Christ University students are there. They can see see me in the space, and my students can see their students. And we use a platform. Why the phone? The students some are in mobile because I use the app where the screen sharing is done. Because we ask some quizzes, interaction questions through this where my students and their students intercultural learning experience this can be done right this is not uh, uh, if you ask me this is not a big uh, hard or maybe big task for the educators if you are innovative if you are inspired okay so you can connect so this is nothing but uh, i have been invited as a panelist in the old tourism day last year so I don't want to share, I, I don't want to keep my opportunity only with me. So what I've done, I took a group of students along with me to participate. Okay, so that the students can interact with the industry players. This, this, this is where we bridge, we close our gap between industry and the students and also educators. And the students also learn to the speakers, interact to the speakers to get the contemporary trends. This is another way how you can move your classroom from a closed classroom. So when you are going for a sharing session as a speaker, ask the permission to take the students. Or oh, that's possible, right? So this is another opportunity for the students to interact with the industry players, look for the internship, look for the job recruitment. Anything can be done, right? So this is another way how you can do it. This is my one of my favorite classroom also last year. Uh, what we call moving our students from comfort zone to learning zone. So this is nothing but I collaborated with one, one university from US, East Carolina University. So in my module, there is we are teaching a similar module, simulation, business simulation module. So there is a final presentation. We made it as a collaborative class. So you can see like my students, when my students are presenting, the students from East Carolina, they will be asking questions. When their students are presenting, my students will ask questions. So when you see this, it was very interesting to see my students have prepared with PowerPoint as Asian culture. But when you see the US, they are very casual. They use it just a chart like a infographic step, storytelling, how they started the game, how. So this is where we get a diverse learning experience, right? So this can be done even. And this is the one way we are moving our students from comfort zone to learning zone. Because the students are always uh, very comfortable, final year already practice to more presentation within your classroom to the same lecturers. How you're going to be different. That's very important. 
uh, this is the same glyphs how we can see the students see the on the left it's the us so you can see the difference the classroom setup difference the cultural difference presentation skill difference so this gives an idea for my students when they get an opportunity to share something to the stakeholders of us how to do a presentation Okay, this is another one very interesting project I started uh, where I should thank the hotel, Grand Dorset. It's a five-star hotel in very close to our university. So we approached the GM and one of my collaborators was Dr. Rupam from my, col my colleague. So we are teaching service quality management. So what we have done, why not we turn the industry space as a learning space? So what we have done, we approached the general manager. We told, okay, we are teaching this. A service quality we want to learn the dining service what we call cervical model from Parasuraman. so we said uh, can we bring our students for a dining experience can you give us a better price okay so she given a good price we took all the students to the uh, dining experience but the initiative didn't stop there so after the dining experience we collected uh, uh, we asked the students to prepare the presentation on their experience and we took the students back to the same industry same hotel to do the presentation in front of the GM and other top management like FNB director, HR director. We asked the students. The students given a very good feedback. They said, This is the first time we are presenting to the industry people in, in my three hours of journey, three years of learning. And it was even the good presenters in the class was panic. Even the students started telling their uh, peer names wrongly. So you can see we are putting the students in a uh, challenging zone that's very important that's where they learn okay so and also it's a contribution to the industry and it's becomes totally different for them for us also different and it opens a space for you to collaborate with the industry uh, this is another example i invited the industry speaker industry people two people to come to the classroom during my students presentation because i had a students from a very uh, diverse crowd there are students from norway uh, netherlands and also students from uh, Indonesia, Philippines, because this is an exchange classroom, exchange mobility program. So where the students come from various countries for exchange program. So I want to give them a good uh, learning experience. So I invited the industry people. So the industry people, I asked them to start with the sharing session about their uh, growth in their respective, because they, she come from a different city. Then listen to our students, ask questions. So this. This is some of the comments given by my students, okay? So which I put uh, thankful, positive, all these things. So this is and another way of approach, borderless, but off onshore. When I say borderless, as I mentioned beginning, I also represent the educator who controls the classroom, right? So what happened? Because whatever I shown is before COVID, but suddenly this thing came in 2020, COVID, what to do? How to do my borderless classroom? So this is where the initiative started. I started approaching the alumni. Okay, then alumni. This is for my post graduation class, international hospitality management. So the students found it very interesting because the slides pop up with online business model. He shared a lot of business models uh, because he was a degree student, diploma degree and master student, and he was with Taylor's for quite long, and he graduated two three years back. And he started his own venture, okay, as an entrepreneur, digital entrepreneur, I can call it as. But he lives in, he's from Kakasistan. So I connected this alumni from Kakasistan to my classroom. So this is a bo virtual borderless classroom, okay. So this is where the learning can be shared to our students. The another approach, joining ends with contactless learning, like borderless. So what I have done, I was also teaching the module. There is also revenue management part. So I approached one of the experts who is also a consultant in US, in Singapore. So Associate Professor Dr. Deadly, we should thank all the speaker I should thank. So they accepted my invitation and he was on, virtually came through the Zoom and he shared his experience. So this is where we, then students started asking a lot of questions and a lot of strategies which they implemented in their upcoming classes. This is one of my interesting part where my journey started actually. This one in March, I did a panel discussion for my master's program. So what I've done, I invited some of the overseas academicians because the module was service code, the quality management. 
So managing quality assurance in the hospitality industry. What is the perspective of AI? So AI here, I'm not telling artificial intelligence. It is my academic industry. Okay, how you are bringing to your learning space. So I invited a academician from overseas, from Philippines, Prof. Maria, and also from hotel GM and public relation manager from one hotel. And also I took the role of moderator and I also invited my school head how in our tailors during this transformation, how the service quality in education is maintained. So this gives an overall picture for the students. Still the learning can go to a next end. So why we do all this thing, borderless classroom? Because it is also in align with our SDE goal 17, which is number four is a quality education, right? So according to uh, UNWTO, like they also come with the 17 goals. So one of the goal is the quality education. So why we do this shift in the learning culture. So we must create a good culture and foster the teamwork because when we move the classroom, you can see most of my examples. I do have many examples because of time constraint. I'm going to, I kept minimum. Uh, so there is always a teamwork, right? So when the, this is where a lot of projects, the teamwork has been because the teamwork is needed for the industry. And this is where we, I'm bringing industry people. I'm bringing overseas academician. I'm bringing my own peers and also alumni. Why? Because collective intelligence with problems, the same issue can be addressed in a different way when you bring a collective intelligence. So don't always uh, rely on artificial intelligence when you have human collective intelligence, right? Then this is a modern workforce. This is the way you need to move forward. And education in future, I think that after COVID really taught us, even though there are a lot of uh, human damages, financial losses, but when you look at the education, this has been transformed a lot, right? A lot of uh, educators, they start up uh, embracing technology learning new skills, right? So this is another way. Uh, I think this is uh, the key for success for future is collaboration at every level. And we need to learn from each other. Why I'm sharing here, we need to learn from each other. Don't keep your knowledge within you that those days have gone. Okay, you must share. And students should work together. That's very important. So your task has to be, have a lot of uh, teamwork and grasp new knowledge. Okay, multiple access points. So keep like, okay, I'm keeping a point from industry perspective, from uh, education perspective, from academic, from peer, from alumni. Even you can ask your own students to share their experience. So this is where you are having a non-linear approach, putting points, learning points in different zones. Okay. And uh, yes, different learning styles, students like it, creating a new learning mindset, which is nothing but learning for care. That means a time for care, collaborate. So there is a study from John 18, 2016. He mentioned like students improve three times the motivation, concentration, persistence, and engagement when you have a lot of collaboration projects. Okay. When you that's where the collaboration and cultural adaptions, intercultural things. I think this is some of the things which has to be noted. So, what are the main pillars of learning environment? So I've broken down the learning environment into four zones. Space, learning, time, and culture. These four are important. So when I say learning space has to be from dictative time, you have to go for non-dictative. So don't go and stand and just deliver. As so even you carry iPad, but if you're still doing the same uh, way of approach, there is no change. Learning is not changing. Only your tool are changing. So learning has to change. And try to have, as I told you, multiple purpose teaching space so that uh, borderless classroom is a new approach. It's not a new, it has been there even in the tradition, but we are creating a new uh, branding for it. And uh, don't keep within classroom beyond. That's why borderless. Uh, don't have a fixed classroom. That means when I say flexibility, when I say flexibility, it's not only on your learning, even sometimes assessment, you can give flexibility to the students. Ask the students how they want to submit. Maybe a task can be common, but they can. Others can submit. This is where the hedagogy approach comes to the place. And culture. Okay, so process focus those days, because those days we are focused more on uh, developing the knowledge, but now more towards capabilities. That's why graduate capabilities are very important. So from student centric, try to be community centric. Okay, let the students, what they are learning, 
should benefit the society and community of his own area and a defined subject flexible inward looking to outward so these are all some of the things which we discussed on the right side learning yes uh, social interspace to the learning there's no way because the technology has really shown us the example the covid shown the example the power of the technology but one thing i would like to say here integrate your technology in the right space with the right audience know your audience know their readiness first don't since you are expert in one area just inject that to the students know your students first understand your learners okay what they prefer then you it then it makes a lot of difference okay that's what i say uh, nowadays the learner like the teachers role it's becoming those days from uh, public people from the students like teacher centric to instructor instructor to learners now it become mentorship coach the role of the learner like uh, educators become coach okay so from the generic mode you try to shift yourself to personalization and customization because every one of us we believe on personalization and customization even when we construct a house when you go and buy we are buying on our own personalization even when we construct a house we personalize it even though the architecture gives a plan but we will try to adjust right even when you go put bringing the home appliance to your home build at home you are the one who's positioning customizing it so but when it comes to learning are you customizing it to your learners that's a question mark and uh, dictate you to the interactive time there is no permanent learning time nowadays uh, there's everywhere the learning is happening everywhere so modular and customized timetables and from fixed learn lesson plan we have to move on the flexible lesson plans so these are all some of the main pillars you can uh, shift when you have a new learning space so i would like to come to the end almost the key for the success in the future is a how the human and technology work together how the human embrace the technology but don't allow the technology to take place human okay because as i told you collective intelligence plays a big role so but probably educator who don't use technology there is a possibility to replace okay but technology cannot replace at any cost uh so you can always reach me these are all my details uh you can find me my email my whatsapp number facebook linkedin and our tailors expert so i would like also to thank everyone for your active participation for the last 33 to 34 minutes and special thanks to the organizing team and the convener dr anuradha madam and also thank you for inviting me and also i always believe it. this is my own words every day is a new day with new learning so every new learning of course it will impart new knowledge every new knowledge is a new experience leads to new skill sets so don't ignore one failure because uh, more failures can teach you more success so as i told like even though it's a pandemic time the storms don't last forever it will go through uh, i also take this opportunity a special gratification to dr anuradha madam for reaching me and also the ict support team without them of course the webinar cannot be very smooth uh, seamless uh, i would like to thank the ict support team and also all the staff member who have been supporting through the organizing team and also the participants so once again i thank and also i thank my university trailers which has given a lot of uh, opportunity for me to explore grow myself in the last more than 9 years this is my 10th year with tailors university i also would like to thank tailors university all my management team my executive deans and uh, chancellor vice chancellors everybody and the learning academy e learning future of learning thank you so much now i stop for q and a session Uh, yes, madam. No. Any I... questions from participants side? Hello. Any questions from participants side? Hello. Good evening, ma'am. Can I ask one question? Yes, please, ma'am. Uh, yeah. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Yes, ma'am. Could you my please introduce yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Please. My name is Maheshwari Purushottaman from Vaise yes. Institute of Technology, Chennai. Mm. Okay. Uh, fabulous and excellent speech, sir. Thank you, uh, I have a small doubt yes, because sir. since I am an assistant professor, na, when mm -hmm. we were dealing with our students, there mm -hmm. will be uh, so many categories. Mm 
such as average student also will be there notorious uh, students will also be there naughty students mm -hmm. will also be there yes, right. so some of them they feel that it's very quite interesting to participate in the online sessions but some of them what they are doing is uh, while i was in a zoom meeting mm -hmm. yeah they okay. were able to scribble mm -hmm. they were not quite interested mm -hmm. so okay. how can we make them also to be quite interesting using your technology sir okay thank you, so much. thank you so much uh, dr mageshwari thank Sorry. yes thank you so much for asking an interesting question yes. i also use zoom in my class yeah okay so what i will share what i am doing so yes. in the zoom there is a setting where the annotate setting only okay the instructor can do so that students cannot scribble okay and what i do i will find if there is a notorious students in my class i will try to put them as a co-host <laughs> i'll ask them to engage the class yeah okay because there is an option called co-host so what okay. i do i will rotate and also i will also try to pin the video sometimes if they are online oh, so that everybody can so these are all and also i will always because my class is 4 hours which i am doing through zoom and always i try to have some three or four pool to ask some questions to get the feedback yeah okay. and also i open a platform sometimes you can tell the name okay now i am going to give a uh, virtual space for maybe mr x to share his experience on this topic so try to bring them that's why i said you must bring the students in a learning process okay sir. i hope i answer your question there yeah sure sir sure excellent explanation and thank you so much sir yeah you are welcome any questions is there any questions in the chat there is a question from gayatri madam to have students of other universities in our virtual class should we enter into mou before and with that university how do we initiate the process uh, thank you for asking i think there is no uh, initiative for your class yeah moe mou is not required probably you inform your higher like for example head of the school yeah maybe you can just inform the head of the school so i'm going to do a virtual class too but i'm also doing so i think that should be fine because you show the example then you go for a mou that makes more meaningful and uh, did i answer your question madam gayatri hari kumar dr gayatri uh, there is a question from uh, dr vidya mathematician like nowadays as this is over uh, bombarding information era students are get confused with who to how to put ourselves or limit okay as i told you one of the time like during the session know your learners first ask the students feedback is very important ask the student which platform they prefer okay give the flexibility to the students also to design their learning space then probably it can give you more output uh there's a question like mathematics like like subjects like mathematics how to adapt borderless classroom you can do it sir you can there are a lot of mathematical apps also available you create a scenario so probably you can do a competition between your students and the other university students so and but you need to put the time limits uh even you can use some uh, uh, what the respond apps like kahoot quizzes with the time limits you can bring the uh, borderless classroom approach in mathematics too uh there is no infrastructure required because i think most of us we have a internet the students have access i think dr sri devi asked what is the infrastructure required for the establish the borderless i think there is no not much it's a regular thing only as a educator you must take some initiative uh as a that connect the university uh, there are a lot of free platforms available to do the webinars so make use of it that's it I hope I answer your question. Uh, excellent session, sir. Excellent talk. We have learned much from you. Thank you, sir. So Karna Lakshmi, ma'am, please start, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Please. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Hello, everyone. 
I am S Karuna Lakshmi from PG and Research Department of Mathematics, Hindustan College of Arts and Science, Coimbatore. It is my great pleasure to deliver vote of thanks. I express my gratitude to our managing trustees, Sri Mati Saraswati Kanayan, ma'am, Dr. Priya Satish Prabhu, ma'am, our beloved principal, Dr. A. Ponnuswamy, sir, and convener, Dr. S. Anuradha, ma'am. for organizing this international fdp i on behalf of our college extend my grateful thanks to our distinguished speaker dr kandapan balasubramanian sir for his excellent presentation on expanding the learning horizon in higher education which is very much meaningful and interesting one i am sure we the participants will have a lot to take away from the speech in boardless classroom thank you very much sir thank you madam it's my pleasure thank you sir and I, and it is very nice the way you are answering the questions very patiently thank you okay. sir thank you madam we all learn from I, each other thank you sir yeah thank you i thank, thank you. each and every one of the participant for joining with us today thank you all Thank you so much. Thank you, madam. Thank you, Dr. Anuradha, madam. Sir, thanks a lot, sir. Really no, excellent no. session, sir. We proud of you, Thank sir. You. Thank you. No, madam. No, madam. Dr. Anuradha, madam, was my. She was my teacher during my MBA, special teacher <laughs> for my quantitative sir. technique. That's a way back, two thousand four. Really, I'm proud of you, sir. Thank you, madam. Thank you so much, and. Uh, Thank you, sir. Thanks for all the participants. keep inspiring keep sharing everybody that's very important thank you so much thank you sir thank you madam thank you participants tomorrow session will be at 2:30 afternoon session thank you thank you all Thank <laughs> you.